Welcome to Celebrating Act 2's second episode in the series, Healthy Masculinity, by the authors of Power Tools for Men. It was, uh, it was really an enlightening episode, uh, the first, first one we did, Art, with, uh, with Leonard Simchik and Rick Bronick about their book, and they covered uh, their first, what I call their first power tool, mm. which is Connection. For men, they wonderful explanation, great stories. I'm looking forward to uh, number two today. Um, but I wanted to just let everybody know if you haven't seen that first one, you can always watch it on our YouTube channel, uh, and you should. And by the way, you should tell your friends and make sure you watch all eight of these videos, each one about a separate quote power tool, uh, power tools for men, as the book uh, says. Um, I can find it. There you go. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got to learn to do that like Betty Furness. She was so good right, at right, it. But right, you have um, to work with refrigerators. <laughs> well, I, I think I'm book okay. guy, book size guy. But anyway, I wanted to, before we get going, I wanted to let everybody know that you're talking, you will be listening to, I should say, uh, the authors who are really experts in the field. These guys have I don't know, 20, 25 years each in terms of men's health. They give seminars. They're, they're in-demand lecturers. Uh, they've both written plenty of books. Yeah, TED Talks. Um, so, yeah, so the point is that this this book is not a uh, last-minute, you know, new thing. This is a well-thought-out uh, book for men, and it really is needed uh, because it's you know we're in a world where toxic masculinity is seems to be a popular phrase and of course that's a trope we all want to get rid of uh, all men it, it, we we need more real men in the world and these guys are with their book are helping us to uh, to develop more real men so let's meet uh, Leonard Simchek and Rick Bronick the authors of Power Tools for Men. And guys, um, as you heard me wax poetic about our first encounter, I'm looking forward to this. Now, you've created the acronym CLASSICS. So we're up to number two, which is LOVE, C-L. Tell me about love. That's a big word, right? It's a four letters, but boy, can it mean a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. Uh, I'm going to start by saying a Rumi quote that we just love. It begins this chapter. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself you have built against it. Hmm. Wow. That's great. It is. Yeah. Thank you. And I, yeah. you, I can't talk about love without talking about Leonard and my deep love for each other and deep love for men. Um, that's why we wrote this book, because we really care about men. As you mentioned, John, uh, tox toxic masculinity is being talked about everywhere. We don't believe masculinity is toxic in any way. We believe masculinity is noble and beautiful and powerful. And sometimes we do toxic behaviors that are hurtful to ourselves and to others. What's been beautiful about write having a writing partner is that Leonard and I, as soon as we connected, we had this bromance. We are both born in Chicago. We're both Polish extraction. Uh, we're both Midwesterners. We both relocated to the West Coast and lo and behold, end up in the same men's group. And we instantly fell in love. And that love has deepened as we worked together and wrote together and sometimes got angry with each other and got afraid of each other and, and you know, fought with each other. And in doing that, we've deepened our relationship. And I really, really appreciate this man in my life. We're very close. We see each other all the time. Uh, and I love him. And we don't, we end up every time we're together, whether we're Zooming or in person with, I love you, brother, uh, every time. Um, yeah, and I want to just jump in, Rick, and, and say, you know, um, uh, love is for men, particularly men loving other men is is really kind of a, a very foreign thing. And it brings up all kinds of homophobia and fears and whatever. But, you know, we really are built to really be very loving uh, to men, to women. And and I think that's, that's what we really want to focus on this particular uh, session. 
And I think Rick's going to take us into, um, you know, taking diving a little bit more into this whole facet of love. Yeah. Thank you, Leonard. <clears throat> and here's the thing that we are aware of, that almost all of us receive what is called love from our families. And it's not really love. It's conditional. We don't get unconditional love from our parents or from society. It's very conditional. So it's based on how we behave, if we're, quote unquote, following the rules of our family and so forth. We're taught to show love by, by acting a certain way, or more importantly for men, by doing things for people. We often get appreciated for what we do, i.e. do well in school or do well in sports or make money for our families and things like that, rather than who we are as human beings. So a big part of our work in this chapter is uncovering who we really are as men and being able to learn to love that part of those parts of ourselves. Uh, that society might, might not even appreciate, but we can appreciate for each other. So, Leonard, you have a story that is helpful in this realm. Well, you know, when I grew up, I never heard the words, I love you, from either my mother or my father. And so that was very foreign for me, I love you. And so I remember I was uh, attending a workshop, a uh, therapy workshop, and part of the workshop was a facilitator was helping us work on our family of origin. And so we did a role play and someone played my mother and uh, my issue with love, or difficulty expressing love came up. And, and so the facilitator says, can you just tell you the person who's playing your mother, I love you. And I remember I was choking, I <coughs> love you. It was like I was choking on the word love. And I realized, whoa, I, I have a lot of work to do on this whole area of love. And when we think about it, you know, as men, we're taught to be tough and strong and achieving. Uh, and and that really love it, uh, asks us to be more open, to be more vulnerable, compassionate, sensitive. And these are the areas that we really have to develop in our lives. And sometimes in love, we have all these fears, fears of rejection, not being good enough, not being loved. Really, love is something that as men, we really have to really dive in and work on, just like as uh, Rick was mentioning you know, it, it's something that uh, uh, doesn't come as easily, especially if we were raised in a family where love wasn't uh, expressed very readily. Thank you, Leonard. And I'd like to share a story about myself and my fabulous partner, Michelle. We've been together almost eight years now. And when I met her, I knew right away I had to up my love game. I had to really step into being more fully loving of myself so I could love her the way that she expected to be loved. And one of the ways we do that is every month we do a check-in. It takes about an hour. And we share with each other, sitting, looking at each other eye to eye, knee to knee, what is really working in this relationship. And invariably when we do that, it brings us to tears. And then we talk about what could be even better. So it's like continuous improvement of this relationship. And we look forward to that check-in time each month um, because it, it's a chance to reconnect in a really deep way, really express our love for each other, and also to look towards the future in bettering our relationship. And we can always find, particularly Michelle, can always find things to better in our relationship. I say that with uh, a humor, but also with love. Um, you know, and I, I, want, I want to say, too, if, if I can just jump in, because, you know, watching Rick and Michelle... They gave me um, you know, the terrific model for me to for me to eventually go into a relationship and, um, uh, and 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 watching Rick and Michelle was just just so phenomenal to really um, give me confidence and and encouragement to, to develop into a relationship with the woman I'm involved in. Yeah, we're, we're Leonard's biggest uh, cheerleaders around this and just so excited he's in a great relationship. Um, another thing that we, Michelle and I worked on, and a lot of couples do, is our love languages. And one of the things we know is that everyone has different ways they like love expressed to them or the way they express love. So fortunately for Michelle and I, our love languages are similar. We both have number one love language of physical touch. We, we loved, we love physical touch, physical contact. So we're always holding hands, each other, kissing, caressing. It's, it's beautiful when we're in public or, or of course, when we're together alone. Um, and the other one is words of affirmation. 
for me, it's very important to have words of affirmation because I was so often uh, given conditional me um, measures of love by my parents, particularly my mother. If you behave this way, I will love you. And so I need unconditional words of affirmation from Michelle, and she provides that all the time. It's really beautiful, and it always touches me. So, so learning your partner's love language and allowing yourself to love him or her in that way uh, really makes a big difference in the relationship and expresses your love more fully. Yeah, and you know, as we open ourselves up to love in our own lives, you know, a key thing is self-love so that we learn how to really love and appreciate ourselves and accepting, you know, so I have flaws, we all have flaws, just accepting ourselves when we do have flaws. And as we do that, we open ourselves up to the next dimension. And the next dimension that we're going to be covering in the next session is authenticity. You know, guys, you have touched my heart because love is such a small word and it means so much, has so many dimensions to it. And you've touched on just a few here. Uh, you've got much, much more in the book. And of course, in the book, which I love because it's not only a great read, it's a workbook for men. And quite frankly, for anybody who loves men, um, and one of the things you do at the end of every chapter, at the end of every power tool chapter, in this case, love, you give a list of what you call stretching exercises. Yeah. Uh, and it's a great list. It's wonderful. Give us one of your exercises, one of your stretches for love. Thanks, John. Yeah, we have six stretches at the end of the love chapter. And my favorite is relating back to the Rumi quote. And it's having a conversation mm -hmm with yourself or better yet with your partner or your men's group, where do I block love entering into my life, entering into my consciousness? How do I block it? Because if I stop blocking it, suddenly I find out that love is coming from every which direction. So it's a great conversation to have. That's great. Yeah. That's I great. also want to, I also want to add um, uh, my, one of my appreciations for uh, uh, reading this book, uh, and particularly this chapter on uh, love. And we're talking about re primarily relationships uh, between men. And I remember growing up uh, in New York City and uh, Jews, Italians, uh, Irish, and uh, particularly in my neighborhood where we had tons of Jews and uh, uh, Italians, is that men would routinely hug one another and even give uh, an affectionate uh, kiss on the cheek. Uh, and uh, it, it was whether it's father and a uh, and a son, or, or just uh, uh, two guys. I remember uh, guys in college uh, uh, that we were friendly with, and uh, we would always uh, give a hug goodbye, and at uh, special occasions, and even if not such special occasions, just a real, really tight hug. So uh, I'm I'm sorry you guys didn't grow up with it. But you got to write about it and to help remind people like me, and I suspect John, who also grew up in the New York metro area, that um, uh, there's a lot uh, that men can learn about their own feelings. Be happy to express them. If you're afraid about it or you haven't done it in a long time, this book will help set you free. So thank you, guys. All right, now... Let's not forget, this is part of an eight-part video series. You guys have been nice enough to um, come back and do a video for each of your eight power tools for men. This is number two. We did uh, connection, number one. Love, what's number three? C-L-A-S-S-I-C-S, -S -S -S. what's A? A is authenticity, John. That's will be our next session. Good, I'm looking forward to that. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.